belt. He just needs that help. We saw Kamal Peterson make that play early on, and since then it started to slow down again. So he's third in the league in passing yards. He's second in touchdown passes. He's on pace for his second best season, and he's done it for half of this season so far without his best receiver, which makes some people think this is as well as he's ever played. Yeah, maybe his best season, and yet when you look at the win-loss records, a lot of Eskimo fans wouldn't wouldn't agree with it. Tate George was shaken up on the last play, a two-yard pickup by E. Bell, second and eight, flag down. Ray over the middle, Gaylor with the catch, and he's brought down by J.R. Ruffin. He'd have a first down, but let's find out about the flag and were the Eskimos offside. I'm not sure if the Eskimos drew the Calgary Stampeder D line offside, but they certainly jumped. It looked to me like Ricky Ray used that snap count to draw the defense off. May have been the newcomer, Siptak. Offside, Calgary. That penalty's declined. First down. And so a 12-yard gain to Gaylor will stand. Trevor, Trevor Gaylor comes right across here underneath that zone defense. He's in the middle of the three three receivers to the formation. See him cut underneath Kamal Peterson, and that causes the bubble and a little bit of room that he needs. Eskimo showing a lot of motion so far. Hurry up, and they'll swing it here. Ebell, did he get a block? Tyler Ebell, another first down to the 29. Tackle made by J.R. Ruffin. You know, offenses are set up so that everybody contributes. Jason Tucker here, watch out. He's really not running a route. He's just coming down and get in the way of any linebacker that might want to come across because in behind him, here's the throw to Tyler Ebell. It comes out of the backfield. Tucker has set up the pick, so it takes a while for Calgary to rally to that tackle. Four catches for Ebell already, 30 on the year. And now a play fake to E. Bell and wide open Mike Maurer. The backup fullback has a catch pushed out by Brandon Browner. Close to another Edmonton first down. Scott Coe is the guy who's going to bite hard. And, you know, they got E. Bell right here in the backfield. Uh, he's going to go in this direction. Watch here on Scott Coe. Watch how he gets sucked into play action. Coe gets up the field. The Edmonton Eskimos have no play. But he comes down sharp towards Ebell, that gives Ray the outside and the ability to drop it into Maurer. Played 10 minutes, Ricky Ray, 130 yards passing already. And first and 10 at the Calgary 18. Five receivers set, but the give is to Ebell. Big hole, left side, and then brought down by Clements, the corner. Well, and, and we felt like Tyler Ebell might get the ball a little more for a few reasons. One is that he has it for the reasons we mentioned earlier so far this year. So they, they know they want to compensate there and, and fill in that, get some more runs for him. But also because he's playing against a defense that ranks seventh against the run in the CFL against, against the Calgary Stampeders. That was a DB making the tackle, Tyler Ebell. Yes, the number seven run defense against the number eight rush offense. Five for Ebell, second and five from the 13. And oh. that pass is caught and held by Peterson and rocked by Dwayne Carpenter, who's had an impact on this first quarter. Well, he, he mentioned it, saved four points. Kamal Peterson and him now talking back and forth. Peterson letting them know that he didn't get hurt by it. There he sits back in the zone, but he's going to come up on the ball when it's thrown in a hurry. Kamal Peterson runs that little out, and here he comes right in the middle of the back. Peterson hangs off. Can't time that any better, can you? No, you can't. That's the perfect way to play it. Carpenter was the guy who saved a touchdown for Kamal Peterson the very first play of the game. 